Howdy, howdy, folks. Neil here from Psych 52 Lab. Today is Module 2, where we're going to be briefly going over R and R Studio and R Notebooks um, and kind of detailing uh, some of the specifics about it. Now, I'll go as a note at this point in time, my expectation is that you have R and R Studio already installed on your computer. If you're having trouble getting R and R Studio installed on your computer, please contact me immediately at neil.yetz at colorstate.edu, and we'll make sure that we get you kind of on track there. Um, additionally, another thing, um, I also want to make sure that if you're having trouble following these videos and you run into any problems, be sure and email me or contact me on Teams um, so that I can get you started. Um, that's what the lab uh, time is for. Like, I'll be there live um, if you're having any trouble with the videos I create. I wanted to create the videos because I kind of felt like they'll be nice for you to be able to reference back to again if you ever have questions rather than you taking notes. Um, this will always be here. Um, I'm planning on uploading them all to YouTube so you'll be able to get to them as much as possible. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and just get started. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this PowerPoint. And really, as you can see, I'm kind of making sure that everything is live. You can see where my cursor is at all times. Um, we'll see how this works. I think this is going to be the best method uh, for virtual teaching. So let's go ahead and get started. So step number one always with... Um, you know, R in our studio is it's always important that you have some sort of folder where you're organized and able to house everything. Um, as you can see here, I created a folder just on my desktop um, called psych underscore 652, where I'm just going to house everything. Um, as you can see, it's a blank folder for now, but throughout the semester, we're going to be filling up this folder with different units so that you can always reference back to it um, later. You know, if you want to store it in somewhere else, like a class folder or something like that, it's okay if it's embedded with other folders. It's just make sure you know how to reference it time and time again, because we'll be referencing it through R time and time again. And I'll show you kind of how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this for now. And we are going to go ahead and open up um, our studio. So I have it right here. Um, if you're on a Mac, it should be in your Applications folder. Um, on Windows, you can go to your Windows file, and it should be under R for R Studio. So if you scroll down to R in R Studio, it'll be right there. I'm just going to go ahead and open it up from my taskbar because I always have it there on handy. All right, so we're open on R. Um, if you're having trouble getting this part, additionally, it's important to make sure that your version is R version 4.0.2. Um, if you're not on that version, please contact me and we'll try and get you to the correct version. It's important that you keep updated as much as possible. Otherwise, you know, you'll be running into errors from time and time again. Um, and being updated oftentimes kind of prevents a lot of those errors. So assuming you're all updated, the first thing I want to do, and this is something that we already did with uh, Kevin's lecture, but I'm going to show you again how to do it. Um, is create an R project. Now, an R project is equivalent to setting a file path, except this file path is already set for you, so you don't have to type it into R. So those of you who have used R in the past and type in these long file paths um, in order to grab a data file, this is solving all that problem. It's really great when you do this so that you can collaborate with others. Um, R project really solves a lot of problems for researchers. So. First thing we're going to do is create an R project. Okay, so to create an R project, I personally go up to this create a project. It's this plus sign with a Q. And then you'll see it says create a project. And you go ahead and click on that. And you can go ahead and click new directory and new project. And what you do is you make sure that this right here is correctly to that folder that we created earlier, to your Psych 652 folder. So for me, it's in this PC desktop, Psych 652, and I'm just gonna press open, and we can name this whatever we want. I'm gonna go ahead and name it module underscore O2. Um, I'm not a big fan of having spaces in my file paths as much as possible, um, but that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna go ahead and press create project, and you're gonna see something down here change. So I'm gonna press create project, you'll notice, Look at that. So our files path changed here, and we're going to see this fill up too throughout the course of the um, lecture here. Um, now the next thing we want to do 
is we want to get our data file, right? And your data file is always going to be housed under where we just created this project. And just so, to prove this to you, if I go to Psych 652, that folder that I created, that new project I created created another folder called Module 02, and I double click that, and there should be two files in there. Essentially, all you want to do is make sure all your data, your R uh, files are all stored within here that are associated with the project that you're doing at the time. And we'll have a lot more practice with this throughout the semester where I'll be creating several new projects and we'll be continually housing different data under them. Um, and this is great because again, it sets our file path in the correct place. So what I want to do now is go ahead and grab a data set. We're going to be grabbing um, a Gapminder data set. If you went through the tutorial, um, the introduction to R and R project um, tutorial, you may have already grabbed this data set, but I'm going to show you how to access this data in, in Canvas. So we're going to go to your internet browser. I use Google Chrome. Go to your Canvas page. Um, I do not know the actual login for it, so I go through Google to do it. And hopefully you're familiar with CSU Canvas here. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And we're going to go ahead and go to the Psych 652 with Kevin's beautiful face on it. I'm going to click there. And then you're going to go over to Modules. And scroll down to Module 2. And it's right here at the very bottom of it. It's a gapminder.csv folder. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to click download gapminder.csv file. There's a few different ways you can get this to this, uh, but the main goal is to get the CSV file so it's in the same folder as this. Um, I'll show you how to do the save as method. So I'm going to go and click on it. It's going to open up in Excel. You get a look at the data set. Then I'm going to go to file, save as, browse. And make sure that you go to wherever that file is stored. I'm going to go to my desktop, Psych 652, Module 02, and make sure that it's saved in there. So I'm going to press Save. And there's a couple ways that you can check to see if this works. So I'm going to go and exit out for now. Um, we don't need this, so I'll go and close out. Um, so first thing, if we go to our actual folder, go to Module 02. It should be housed in the same place as that R project folder we created earlier. Additionally, when we open up and we go to this files tab down here, you'll see that it already it exists in this environment down here, which is great. That shows that we did it right, um, which means now we can use that as a readable object in R. Um, and I'm going to show you how to load up, um, you know, different C CSV files. Um, within R and R notebooks. So I wanted to start this off by showing you um, an R script again, and then we'll go on to R notebooks. So we're going to start off by creating an R script. An R script is just a general way of writing R code and executing uh, functions. A function is essentially just uh, something that does something in R. Whenever you see some sort of word with those parentheses at the end of it, that's a function that we'll be working with. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is you go up here to this little plus sign in a blank paper, click the arrow, and you're going to click R script. Or you could do control shift in, but either way. And something will open up here. This is an R script up here now. What this is, is anything we write up here and we highlight and press run, it's going to run down here in our console. And this console is essentially just the calculator. But this up here, is what we tell to run in that console, okay? So, and let me go ahead and just load up my notes here real quick so I can make sure we're in the right place. Um, don't mind. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the first thing that I always like to do is I like to install my packages at the very top. Um, people oftentimes like to sometimes read um, files in, but we I use the tidyverse package to load in files, and I'll show you how to do that. Additionally, I'm going to show you how to kind of keep as organized as possible in this R script. So the first thing I want to do is I want to note what I'm doing. It's really important to always keep noted what you're doing. And we keep notes through R by using a hashtag symbol. 
um, or pound symbol, whatever you call it. I call it hashtag because I'm a millennial. Um, so notice how I use a hashtag symbol. This is essentially called commenting something out. And anything that's to the right of this symbol means that it won't be run in R. And what I'm going to type in here is install the oops, if I can type tidy first package. And what's great is if you can have R open at the same time and run through this while I'm doing this as well. So, and then I'm going to press enter and work on the next line. Now I'm going to be doing something called installing a package. So installing a package provides you access to a lot of different functions, as we call them. And again, functions are those things that do something in R, and they have the parentheses at the end of it. So we use a function to install a package, and that, that function is called in, uh, let me get off of this, install, so if I install dot packages, and it has to be exactly like this, parentheses, then in quotation marks, we're going to type in tidyverse. We're going to be using tidyverse for a lot of different functions. Um, as a note, this might take a while to run on your computer. It's a big package, um, but I hope that it won't take too long. Um, you don't necessarily have to install the package every time. Um, I usually only run it once every now and then just to make sure things aren't updated. What this is doing is actually going to go online find this tidyverse package, pull it back to your local R, and give you a bunch of functions associated with it. So the way that I run code in R is I highlight it, and then I press run. So you go to that, or you do control enter. If I go ahead and press run, we see something happening down here in the console. That's good. If it's running in your console, that's great. And as you can see, um, um, even though it's right here, that's okay. Um, it's just said we successfully installed Tidyverse, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out because I don't like to install my packages over and over again. Um, if you want to install packages over and over again, that's fine. I personally am not a big fan of it. Then I'm going to skip down a couple lines by pressing enter twice. I'm going to create a new comment. I'm going to write this as load the Tidyverse package. Now, once we install a package, we always have to call it back up. And the way that we call it back up is using something called a library function. So you do library and then parentheses. And it's great, it turns blue and knows that we're doing this function here. And what we wanna do is load up this tidyverse package. You don't need any quotation marks, you just need the name of the package. And you can do this with several different packages. We'll be using the psych package a lot and we'll be using many other packages. So let's go ahead and just run this line of code here. So go ahead and highlight it and then press run. And as you can see, it gave me some, it says library tidyverse and it gave me some things that it did. Don't worry about this conflicts, that's okay. Um, every time you load up tidyverse, um, it'll give you that. Um, essentially we're running into something called package conflicts, um, but that's okay. Um, this shouldn't really bother you at all during the time in this class at least. So now we have tidyverse loaded up. And that gave us access to a function called read underscore CSV. And I use read underscore CSV to load up our data files. Um, it's a really great um, way to do it. I know some of you are familiar with read.csv. This is a little different way of doing it. Um, this one's a little bit quicker um, and it allows you a little bit more access to things um, as well. So I'll be using read underscore CSV for this class. Um, and, it's, and there's some reasons I do that um, that I won't get into detail about, but the read underscore CSV, especially for Windows users, tends to avoid problems that read.csv function has. So I'm going to create a new comment. If you notice the theme with me is I really like to comment things so that I know what I'm doing. And I'm going to type in use read underscore CSV uh, to load data into R. And I'm going to say something, this will create an object in your environment. If you want to, I would suggest writing down these notes as well. It'll keep you a little bit more organized. And then we're going to actually use the read CSV function. So let's go ahead and try out this read CSV function. So there's a few parts to this function. The first thing we want to do is we're going to do something called creating an object. So what you do is you think, 
I'm going to be loading in a data set into my R data file. What do I want to name that data set? We are going to name this data set the GM data set. And you'll see in a second what's going on. Then we use something called an assignment operator. An assignment operator is essentially this less than sign and dash. Okay, now we can use this function. And there's reasons that we do this. And we do read underscore CSV, parentheses because it's a function, and then in quotation marks, notice that we're going to have to use quotation marks. This oftentimes means that you're going to be reading something from outside of R and bringing it into your local environment um, in this case. What we want to do is make sure that we name this exactly what our CSV file is. So see how it says gapminder.csv? So we want to use quotation marks and then gapminder.csv. Now note that R is uh, case sensitive, so it has to match the casing. If you have a capital G in here, it won't read correctly. So if we run this entire line of code, what's going to happen is it's going to appear over here down in your console and tell you whether it was successful or not. And if we did it successfully, something will load up in our environment. What this is, is your global environment. And this is essentially saying, this is something that I, in R, am able to now work with. So let's go ahead and let's see if it'll work with that. So go ahead and do that, highlight it, press run. Okay, so we did that GM, we see that it runs. And then it tells us all the variables in that data set, which is really great. It additionally tells us what type of it is. So it's saying country is a character variable, continent's a character variable, year, pop, and GDP per capita are called COL double, which essentially means they're a numeric variable. And now we have it open over here in our global environment. If we want, we can go in and click on it, and we'll see our data set. Remember that data set we saw in the Excel file before? Now we have it in R for us, which is great. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this document right now. It's really good just to constantly save as much as you can. So the way you save an R document is you go up here to this file here, press, press it, and it should hopefully load up in the same place as your R project file. And let's go ahead and name this um, gapminder, if I can spell, gapminder underscore exploration. Okay, and then we'll go and press save. And now we have a file in there and notice how it now is in our same projects there. It also appears in here, which is great. All right, so let's go ahead and start working with some functions in R, okay? So we've loaded in our data set. Let's go ahead and, you know, I like to do this. Let's go ahead and look at the names in our data set. I know it already told you what the names of the variables are here, and you can also look at it here by clicking on it and just, you know, perusing. But it's good to know the function, because sometimes you're working with data sets that are really large, and it's kind of annoying to click on here and know what your variables are. So let's go ahead and just, um, let's just work with this. And it's good to get a, a, you know, a feel for functions as well. So I'm going to create a new comment, so using that hashtag symbol. And we're going to say get names of variables in gap, gapminder data set. All right, go and press enter. So we're going to use a new function. Remember, functions are those things that have some sort of name with parentheses around it. We're going to do names, and then we're going to just name it whatever the name of the object is in our, in our environment. So we named it gm earlier. So gm, notice I don't need quotation marks or anything like that. Go ahead and highlight that and press run. And look at that. Country, continent, year, life expectancy, pop, GD per, per capita. That's the variables in our data set. And we can confirm it by clicking here. So as you can see, it matches these variables up here, which is great. All right, let's do something new. Let's get another function in here, right? Let's um, do something called getting the structure of the object. What this is going to do, so let's go ahead and just first do it. So get structure of the data set object. Our data set object is this up here. We use a function called str, and we're going to use gm. 
what this function does is it just tells you a little bit of information about the data set. So I highlight it, press run, and it's telling us, okay, you have a something called a tibble. It's got six variables and 1,704 observations. Great. That's exactly what we'd expect. We have these. These are all of the um, variables, and it gives you a little preview of what those variables look like as well. So the first few in the variable country are Afghanistan. We have Asia, year, life expectancy, population, and the GDP per capita. And then it also is, tells us some more information. This is really great. It's good to get a feel of your data. We're not doing any kind of math or statistics quite yet. We'll get that later in the course. For now, we're just getting you know, aware of what our data looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and use another function called head. Head allows you to view the first six rows of your data set within the console. So let's go ahead and create a new um, comment. And then we're going to say view the first six rows of the data set object. Okay, so we use a function called head. Like I said, these are pretty you know, basic functions and parentheses. And we just name our object again. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can go to highlight it, press run. And this just displays the first six rows of our data set. Like I said, normally you can just click on it and view it, but sometimes you might be working with data sets that are kind of big, so it's kind of good to have this. Things might go a little slower on the computer and so forth. Notice how I just saved there. I like to constantly save as much as possible. So these are just a few basic functions in R. What if you wanted some more information on a function and you weren't sure how to use a function or you, you read about a function somewhere and you wanted some more information. Well, the great thing about R is it has an internal uh, help function. And the way you can do that is simply by typing a question mark in the name of the function. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a new comment here and it'll be hashtag use question mark get information on a function. So let's say you know you wanted to figure out some more information about the head function later. Well, if you wanted to do that, you go ahead and press question mark, and then you type in head, no parentheses or anything like that. As you can see, it kind of shows up. You highlight that, press run. Look at that. Something happened. Over here, we have a help bar. And this tells us how we use the head function and what it's about and what it does. So it's telling us, okay, it, it tells us about the last part of the vector and said, the more you kind of work with these, um, these kind of, they're called vignettes, the easier they get to read, they get, they are to read. So it's telling you, okay, there's this thing called head. It just requires one sort of variable That's all it needs. And you have some other things that you can do with it, some other functions. It shows you these things called arguments. So you can manipulate the head function so it does more than just show you the six rows. You can tell it to show you seven rows, show you eight rows, whatever it is you choose. There's also a way of getting a more broad search um, of something. So if I do, so I'm going to go ahead and type in you no know, new thing here. And you're in, if you type in two question marks, question, question, um, to get a more broad um, as a note, I'll usually go to Google before I use this, but it's good to know. So if I did question question mark head, it'll give me a more broad search of the function of head. So you go ahead and highlight that, go ahead and press run, and you'll notice over here it's loading a little bit. It gives me anything that's associated with head, you know, whether this be a function of uh, a package I haven't utilized before, but it's just a good little helpful tool to have. Um, and really, that's all I kind of wanted to show you in this general R script. Next, I want us to talk about using um, a R notebook. So let's go ahead, save this. We can completely exit out if we'd like. Um, I find it's better just to completely exit out. Don't worry. It's going to ask you if you want to save the workspace. You're going to go ahead and press... Um, 
no. Oh, okay. I guess it didn't ask me to save the workspace, but sometimes it does. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go and open up that folder again. Go to module of two. And I'm going to open up this R projects file. So if you click on that, it's going to open up a fresh new uh, R, R Studio session, which is great, which is exactly what we need. And you'll notice if you click on the Files tab, you'll be directed to the same exact place. What I want to do now is talk about how to create an R Notebook. So hopefully you're kind of on a new environment tab. And what you do, you're going to go up here to this kind of plus sign with a paper on it. You're going to click on the arrow, and we're going to click R Notebook. Click on that, and we'll bam. We have a really cool um, notebook thing. Um, I'm a really big fan of our notebooks. Um, I use them all the time. Companies, uh, you know, whether it be a private organization, they love when you use our notebooks. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go over some of the basics of our notebooks. And we're going to create some cool things in our notebooks as well. And let me go ahead and just check on my time here. Okay. So. Let's go into, so what it does is it always opens up and has all this kind of information, which is really helpful information to know. Um, you know, it tells you kind of what to do. You can kind of go ahead and press this play button if you'd like, and it's going to go ahead and load up a uh, graph for you. Cool, you created your first plot, but generally what we do is we just delete all of this. Um, notice how I'm not deleting the three bars right here, just everything underneath that. Go ahead and delete that. And we have a blank canvas to kind of work with here. Um, let me go ahead and pull up some notes for myself. There we go. So the first thing I want to talk about um, is kind of this white space here. Um, when you're working in this white space, this white space is called um, markdown language. Um, essentially, you can write whatever you want in this white space. Um, there's some pretty sweet functionalities associated with it that I'm not going to get into detail, but go ahead. In your R notebook, go ahead and write, you can write whatever you want in the white space. All right, let's do a little exclamation point just to make it exciting, which is great. Um, so, and you can go ahead and click that and you just press enter a few times and you'll see that really nothing happens. Um, this looks like a blank canvas, but we're really going to fill it out. In fact, we are going to fill it out so that we get a really cool um, document that is going to look like, let's go ahead and move this over here. It's going to go ahead and look a little bit like this, if I can get it up. We're going to create a cool document. It's going to have a table of contents. It's going to have these big level headers. It's going to have some R code. It shows everything that you're going to do. We're going to create a plot. That's what I want to have by the end of this, um, if you do this. So let's go ahead and go back to our thing. Um, okay, so first things first, let's talk about some of the cool tricks you can do in this white space of, called Markdown Language. First thing you do, if you type in a hashtag and you press space, and it's pretty essential we have the space, and you start typing things, it's going to do something called creating a header. So um, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's just give you some instructions. Hopefully you can follow along. I'm going to do a hashtag at the beginning oops, of a line in the white space creates a header. So it's pretty cool. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, kind of tell you, let's go ahead and type in some information about so that you can be reminded later about this. So let's go ahead and type this in. So the beauty of headers will become apparent when you knit your notebook. And you can knit by pressing this preview button, or there's a few other functions, uh, possibilities here, but we're mostly going to be using this preview notebook. Um, preview notebook. And really, um, we use headers to uh, indicate different sections of our notes book, which is great. Um, and you're going to see how this works out as well. You can now additionally create subheaders. And the way you create subheaders 
What that means is it's going to create a header under this header. Is it used? Well, it's pretty simple. Just a hashtag, hashtag, space. And then let's go in and create a note that says a hashtag, hashtag creates a second level header. Notice how it's in blue? That's a good thing if it's in blue. Um, and I'm just going to go write, write something down here. Let's just write neat. Okay. Um, and then you can go even farther. You can do hashtag, 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 a one, two, three creates a third level header. And let's just go even more neat. Cool. And I'm going to show you, just to prove to you that this worked, if you want to right now, you can go ahead and press this preview button. Well, actually, first we're going to save. I'm sorry. First we're going to save. Uh, let's go and na name this Catminder Exploration. And we'll name it Notebook. And you go ahead and press save. You know, name it whatever you want. And you'll notice it created something new here. Let's go ahead and press preview. You press preview. Notice how those hashtags we created created this big header, and anything under that is just normal white text. And that's what's really cool about this. Um, let's go and open that up again. And we're going to go ahead and manipulate something up here so we can have a table of contents, actually. And we'll rename the title of the notebook as well. So you can exit out of this, minimize it, whatever you want. Um, and I'm going to show you how to work with something up here. Up here, between these three dashes, is something called a YAML header. That's Y-A-M-L, uh, a YAML header. And what this does is it manipulates some things about the notebook. You can change the styling of the notebook. Um, just a few things about this YAML header. It's really fidgety. You need to do things exact for it to work right. But I'm going to teach you a couple tricks here. Let's go in first by um, start off by creating a title for our notebook. So it's really nice to have a title. Let's go ahead and name this. Yeah, actually, let's go ahead and name this our notebook dash dash. Yeah, minder data exploration. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a new title. Additionally, I want us to create a table of contents for this. Now, this is a little bit tricky, and it's kind of important you do it exactly right, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So what you do, click right before this HTML underscore notebook. You're going to go and press Enter to make a space. Press Tab, and you go over here. Press colon, and then you click Enter again, and type in POC space, yes. And what that's going to do, assuming I did it right, I'm pretty sure I did, if we press preview now, now we have a table of contents. It shows where every single time you indicate where one of those hashtags are, it's going to create a header, a subheader, and a subheader of that as well which is really nice. And this becomes really great for when you have really long notebooks. Um, as you need to scroll down, you can go to a, a different section really quick. And we're going to use this capability too. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and execute some actual R code, because what's the point of this unless we're doing some actual executable R code? So let's go ahead and let's load a package for this session. So load load packages for this session. All right, so we go ahead and we created a first level header. Um, and now what we're going to do is you can write some notes here saying, you know, below I am going to load the tidyverse package. Cool. We're going to load the tidyverse package. Um, and let's go and write some more notes and say, um, you know, to do this, I will create an R chunk. Great. And really, what an R chunk is, is just a space for some executable R code. And the way we create an R chunk is um, I'm going to go ahead and press enter and get to a new line here. Kind of sometimes it's important to have the cursor placement correctly. And you're going to go to insert R. You click this, and right where your cursor is, it creates a new executable R code. And remember when we were working with the R script? 
anything in this gray space works like an R script. And it's great in our notebooks because we can become really organized um, and we can load things in different R chunks so that we can keep ourselves really organized. So if you remember from um, our last kind of section where we were actually working in R code, we're actually just going to type in library tidyverse. Uh, tidyverse. And we're just going to go ahead and load it. Um, function, use this function to load up this package. You can install the package again if you'd like, but we've already installed the package before, so it's not quite necessary here. And the way you run this chunk of R code is you go up to this play button and you run current chunk. Go ahead and press that play button. And voila, we have some cool stuff happening here. Remember that stuff that appeared in the console before? Now it appears right below. If there's an error, it's going to appear right below your R, R chunk code, which is great. So now we've went ahead and we've loaded up the tidyverse package here. Um, let's go ahead and load up that getminder data as well. So I'm going to create a new section it's called import data. Um, and let's go ahead and just write some notes here and say below, I will be importing my Gapminder data set into R. Um, and you can even say, you know, we'll be naming it Doom. So you can even say, I will be naming it as a new object called GM. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to press enter, get to a new line, press insert, then R. And okay, so that new R chunk appeared. This is great. This is executable R code. So we're going to do exactly what we did. So first, we name the object. So we're going to name it DM. We use our assignment operator, which is that lesson sign dash. And we use our function read underscore CSV. Whoa. And then we name it exactly as our data set over here. So we're going to name it as gap minder CSV. All right, so let's find out if it worked or not. We go ahead and press play, I run that current chunk, and voila. So it did exactly what appeared in that console from the R script, and it appeared in our um, environment here, which is perfect, exactly what we wanted. So we have our six variables and our 1,704 observations. So as you can see, 1,704 observations. And we can go ahead and exit out of here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save. Um, and then um, let's go ahead and, you know, try something a little bit different. I'm going to try and create a plot with you guys. And really what this is going to do, just so you have something a little bit more interesting within your notebook here, let's go ahead and create a plot. So hashtag space creates a plot. Just so you have something to do. So we're going to be using a function called gtplot, which I'll explain a lot more next module. But I think if you just follow in here, you'll be able to kind of figure it out. So we're going to go ahead, create a plot. We're going to use insert r. All right. So let's make our first plot in r. So we're going to use a function called ggplot. Use a parentheses. And we're going to do something called calling the data set. So we're going to use data equals gm. And all that is is this referencing what we have in our environment here. This is a comma. Then we use something called an aesthetic function, which is AES. And we want to designate what our x variable is um, in this plot that we're creating. So we're going to use AES and we do something called x equals. And we're going to use the life x variable here. So if you notice, it's got L-I-F-E, all lowercase, then an uppercase E, X-P. And you're going to go ahead and just move over twice, do a plus sign. And then you're going to go ahead and press Enter. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be Enter, but I like to do it. We're going to use something called geom underscore density. And really, this is just a blank function. And if I'm correct, um, even though it's giving me this x here, I think things should work out. Uh, let's go ahead and press play. Yep, looks like it worked out. So we created a plot. So you really, 
I'll be explaining ggplot in more detail next unit, but I just wanted to do something fun and create a histogram with you all um, here. So go ahead and save the document. Um, you notice some things happen over here when you do that, that's okay. And let's go ahead and just press preview and just see what our notebook looks like. So we click on preview and look at that. We have a title, we have a table of contents of explaining everything we're doing. Anything we wrote in that white space just kind of shows up. If we put a hashtag in front of it, it creates a header. Um, we can click on this table of contents to take us down to certain parts. So let's go down to where we imported data. So if you click that, it'll automatically lead you to where it imported data. Like I said, this is really great. Organizations love having these. It's really nice for you. It keeps them really organized. Um, and yeah, so this is kind of your first R notebook. And what I like to do a lot of times is, um, you know, I'll exit out of this. Um, and I like to make sure everything is running appropriately before I finish off. So what I do is I go to run. And I do something called restart R and run all chunks. And what this does is it makes sure that everything in my R notebook runs appropriately. So let's go ahead and restart R and run all chunks. And what it's doing, all it's doing is restarting our R session and just going through each of these individual little gray tiles here. And if we look, we didn't experience any errors and we're like, okay, looks like it's all working out okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and press save. And if you want, you can exit out. And if you go back to that Psych 652 folder that you created, let me go ahead and bring it over here, open up on my other screen. And you go to module two, you have a lot of different things here now. So it filled up a little bit. We have our data set. This is our R file. So this is the original file that we just used R script on. So just to load it up, just to preview. So that's what we're using in the R script. And just so you know, all these functions can be written in your R notebook as well, as long as you put in those R chunks. Go and exit out. Uh, we can click on this. This is our R notebook. This is called an RMD file. Stands for R markdown. And this is what we wrote before. Can exit on this and we can even open up our notebook and look it opens up in whatever your default browser is should work on just about everything uh, if you're using internet explorer it might give you some problems but usually with chrome and safari i find it works out pretty well but this opens up as an html document and it's really nice and you can go ahead if you wanted to you can email this to people um, and whatever um, i'll be expecting you to upload this to um your lab, it's, there's a portion of the lab where I'll say, turn in your R notebooks here, turn in this Chrome HTML document. That's gonna be the best uh, way for me to be able to grade you uh, so I can view it as well. Okay, um, let me go ahead and check the time here. So we are at about 42 minutes, a little bit longer than I thought it was gonna be actually. Um, if you'd like, um, I'm by this time I'm gonna have a, you know, a document that I'm hoping you'd be able to work through actually. Um, it should be pretty easy, but um, so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and go to your CSU Canvas, go ahead and go to Home, and by the time this video is up, you can go to Modules, and you can scroll down to Module 2 Lab, and there's going to be a, a document here called Module 2 Lab Activity.pdf, and what I'd like you to do is go ahead and open that up. And what I did is I created a document um, for you to go ahead and read through and see if you can follow along with the activity. Um, for this video, I think I'm going to go through the kind of first six or seven um, steps if you want to, or you can go ahead and just pause this video and try it on your own. Um, and we're going to go ahead and run through it. So if you want to try and do this on your own, you can go ahead and pause the video. If you want to get some more help and how you do it, um, go ahead and just you know stick around and follow along with me. So if you open up this, it's a PDF file and says download the iris.csv data file from the module to lab module and save it to the folder we created our product. So we already created an R project folder before, right? So um, actually we're gonna go desktop and then go to Psych 62 Model 2. This is where our project is. We've already created one for us. So let's go ahead and go to the, so I'm gonna go home, go to Modules, and we're gonna scroll down to the iris.csv, and go ahead and click on that, and let's go ahead and download the iris.csv. 
and it'll download. Go and click on it. Go and file, save as, browse. And you can put this into a new folder if you'd like. I'm just going to be putting it back into the, um, sorry, into my desktop, into that Psych 652 module 02, just so I keep it all there together. As we can see, our Gapminder data sets there. We're going to keep this name as Iris. Press save. All right, great. I'm going to exit out of that. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and go back to that folder. I'll show you how I got there again, Psych 652. Module 2. And I'm going to go ahead and just open up this uh, new project so it keeps in the same place. And let's just confirm our iris.csv folder is there, our data set is there. Let's go and create a, let's go and read the directions actually. Uh, create a new R, R notebook and let's save it as iris data exploration. So go to here, our notebook. All right. And we're, let's go ahead and just do save it. And we'll name it as Iris Data Exploration. Okay, go ahead and press save. All right, and uh, okay, and we'll go and read the directions again. Uh, set the title of your notebook to Iris Data Exploration. So what I mean by that is going up here, setting up Iris Data Exploration. Great. And then uh, request a table of contents to be produced. Great. So remember that how that went. Okay, so let's do this together. So you click here, click enter, tab, colon, enter, POC, colon, yes. And that should work out. Oh, if I would name it correctly, POC. Yes, so make sure it's TOC. All right, so we set up our table of contents. Delete all the generic text. So what I mean by that is deleting all of this except for that YAML header as we talked about before. And then, um, yeah, I'll keep going with you. Um, let's insert a new R chunk with a first level header called load packages. All right, so what I mean by that is creating this first level header called hashtag load packages. Go ahead and press enter, get down to the next line. We're gonna create a new R chunk. And remember how we load up our, our packages? Um, we, let's see what packages we need to load up here. So load the tidyverse and psych packages. So you might need to install the psych package if you haven't downloaded it before. So let's go and do this. We're going to do library tidyverse. Um, and then we're going to use install uh, packages quote psych. And then go and do library psych. And you can go and press play on this, and we're going to see what happens here. So it's going to load up our library, it's going to install the psych package, and then do load up the psych package for us. Go ahead and press run the current chunk, and a lot of things are going to happen here. So it's loading up the library, it's installing the site package. Okay, so see something should happen. It's going to give us a lot of things. Library site. So it looks like site was successfully uh, unpacked and installed, which is great. Um, you're going to get this little warning. Don't worry too much about that warning. Um, this again is running into something called package conflicts. Um, we uh, don't necessarily need to worry about those for now. I'm going to go ahead and just comment this out so we don't have to worry about that again. I'm going to save. Now, let's go ahead and go back here. And let's get you to the import data part. So let's go ahead and do this. Insert a new R chunk with the first level header called import data. All right. So hashtag import data. All right. So uh, what we do, create a new R chunk. I'm sure you're noticing a theme here. And we're going to use again, we're going to name that. Well, actually, I'm sorry. I think there's some more instructions here. Uh, so write a comment within the check saying, I'm going to import data into R. 
Okay, so let's go and do this. Hashtag. Uh, this is a comment within the R chunk, so this acts as executable R code. It's different than creating a header. And going to say I you know, let's see what I wanted to say there before. And to import the data into R. I'm going to import the data into R. Go and press enter. And again, first thing we want to do. Well, let's go and read our instructions here. So we're going to read the iris.csv function, um, and we're going to call it a new object called iris underscore data. So we have what our object name is. So we want to name it iris underscore data. We use that thing called an assignment operator, which is the lesson sign with a dash. We use the read underscore CSV function in quotation marks. We're going to call up our iris.csv iris.csv, go ahead and press play. All right, looks like it loaded up correctly. So we have a new object called iris underscore data, and it's got one, two, three, four, five variables with 150 observations. All right, so I've got you, if you're able to follow along appropriately, let's go ahead and save. I've got you to the point where you have the data loaded up in our notebook. Now the next task is for you to go ahead and follow along from eight on, uh, onwards and see if you can continue the trend. So you'll be using that names function, structure function, and so forth. If you have any questions, go ahead and just come on to the Teams chat. If you're watching that, go and send me an email and I'll be able to help you as much as I can. Um, okay. Thank you so much. Let's go and exit out of that. Um, let's go and just preview this so we can see what it kind of looks like. There you go. So we've got part of your notebook done. If you want to kind of click on that and get it down to the import data. Okay, I'm going to go and exit out. And I'm going to leave the rest of it up to you to kind of figure out. And like I said, if you have any questions, don't be afraid. Come into the Teams chat and I'll help you out. Uh, hope to see you there. Bye.